right, what's going on, everybody? How is it going? My name is Ian Robinson. I am the Lead Zebra Trainer here at Maxon. Hope everybody's having a good day. Also, too, just really, really quickly, I have a new audio setup. I got a new, got a new mic that I'm going to be dedicating a little bit more to. I also have some music in the background, so the headphones are off. So hopefully, the sound sounds good. Let me know if the audio sounds good or if there needs to be a little bit of an adjustment. So definitely, please let me know. But wanted to get a little bit cleaner sound. Yeah, it's a bit quiet. Okay, great. Let's do something real quick. I'm also going to be yelling into it a little bit too. Let's turn it up just a little bit and let's see if that sounds pretty decent. What about that? I don't want to be blasting it. So let's see. What's going on, Matthew? What's going on, B? What's up, Irene? What's up, Jaime? How you doing? Jamie, how's it going? Boom, boom, boom. Uh, it's busy today. Just want to drop by and say, what's up? What's up, buddy? What's up? What's up? It's better? Okay, cool. I could turn it up a little bit more. I just want to make sure I'm not clipping everybody's ears. So the fact is we'll go up just a little bit higher. Okay, we'll say something about that. Cool. I do have my AC unit going on in the background. So if you don't hear that, then we are, we are good to go. You're at 50? Nice, man. Back from Paris with some books and many photos. Oh my gosh. I love going to Europe. I've never been to Paris, but that's on my list. I'm like, I, I need to travel more. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so Zebra Summit, that's the thing that I'm talking about real quick right here. Zebra Summit is open. I've been talking about it for a few weeks. I'm going to continue talking about it because it's happening. So you want to register. It's open to the public as in in person, as well as, of course, online so you're going to want to check it out september 28th through october 1st it's going to be a lot of fun sculpt off all that good stuff a lot of stuff is going to be announced soon so just make sure you register and look out for that so a lot of really cool stuff okay good nice nice all right so now that's out of the way we're going to do a little bit of a real talk here for a moment because as you know we've been working on nightcrawler so we're going to go ahead and click back to my zebra screen right here so you can see so I think this is something that's really fascinating. I wanted to open up with this real talk about artistry and how you feel with your work, especially when you're sculpting and especially in, as a digital sculptor primarily. I mean, never really done anything traditional, although I am starting to take a class via John Brown. So ching ching, I'm super excited about that. But here's the thing. Um, a lot of times, this is why I actually wanted to talk about the concept of posing and why we should be posing very quickly to at least see where our project is going and kind of get some of those bad ideas out the way first and foremost. So I wanted to talk about, I didn't really get a lot of chance to work on this when I thought I could, because just a lot too much at work came up. So there's a lot of stuff that I, I like the idea, but I don't love this. And so what I'm gonna do is actually take a step back and I wanted to talk about that aspect a little bit and the reasons why I'm gonna take a step back and we're gonna work a little bit more in T-pose and get this character a little bit more flushed out today before going back into the posing. And the reason why is because when I pose this character, I don't think this is horrible, but I don't like it. I'm not in love with it. I don't think it's great. It's a good starting spot. But I think the idea of like always having to commit to a single idea is a little, is a little much. So for me, what I'm doing is just, we're opening up the stream with true transparency and just taking a look and being like, okay, this is an okay idea, but this is not the direction we're gonna go. I also didn't like the other pose that we was in. And so it's, I find it fascinating that sometimes as artists, we'll overthink things just a little too much. And this is, this is me for sure. I've overthought this project way too much. So we're gonna take a step back, finish out the block out of the suit and everything else, get some cleanup done today. And then after that, we'll then kind of figure out um, final posing and stuff. And we might even pivot to some really fun ideas. So just wanted to open up with that and just see what you guys thought of that process. What is up, Photos Mint? Welcome, welcome. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna clear this out here and we're gonna go back to this project here and we're gonna finish the block out section and kind of see what, what is happening with that. And if you guys have any questions on that, definitely let me know. But as we get through this, we're gonna be going through some stuff. So this is our main base mesh. This is where we were currently at with this block out here. And then now we're just gonna go through and start doing, we're gonna do some, a little TLC to this. So I wanna actually, I wanna actually get him kind of cleaned up 
Uh, he's he was chopped up for for posing purposes, and we're going for a suit again. We're going for Nightcrawler's kind of classic suit, but I also had some other ideas in the process too. But what I do like about the fact that I spent so much time posing is I learned a lot of things that I actually want to change my process a bit to match the need of the sculpture. So we are going for more of this classic lit suit. So this is what we're going to be blocking out and getting that situated. And of course, you guys can ask all the questions that you need to, ZBrush related, sculpting related, you know, how I think about the weather, you know, that sort of stuff. So you definitely feel free to come in and stuff like that. But let's go back in and Let's close him up just a little bit. We have some good anatomy placement. Good anatomy placement is just knowing that everything that is supposed to be here is here. It looks fine. Um, there's definitely some corrections that need to happen. But overall, we got something that's looking pretty, pretty decent. And we're going to be finessing. We're also going to be blocking out his head today. So what I want to do is save this as a placeholder. And then let's get the rest of this kind of going. So the first and foremost is let's make him look a little bit more like Nightcrawler, yeah? I overthink things and then add more details than, I, <laughs> than I'll ever be able to put in a print. <laughs> oh my god, dude, I'm right there with you. It's so much crazy. Hello, Amir, how you doing? What's up, Snickles? Bow, 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 bow. Uh, I'm not going to ask about the weather because it's damn hot. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, it's really crazy hot. But uh, yeah, okay. So we got some poly groups. Let's go ahead and close this out. And again, so we have something that's good enough for, for what we're going for. Now let's go ahead and get his kind of suit. So what we're gonna do is literally, I'm just going to, I'm gonna mask off this section. Now here's the cool part. So everybody's used to the lasso mask and stuff like that. But what we're gonna do is go up to stroke and I'm gonna go to lazy mouse. I'm gonna turn lazy mouse on. And the reason why I'm gonna turn lazy mouse on is because I want to have a nice clean edge and I want to make sure that this actually works out well. Boop. I want to mask this correctly. So I'm going to come through here and get just a rough selection. I'm working with symmetry, so this will be fine. Now I'm going to look at the back of his, uh, I'm assuming the back is fairly similar. We're going to make a couple couple of little changes like you know a little bit of like um creative control here okay i'm gonna zoom in just to make sure that this is actually doing what i want this to do because i want to make sure that this is nice and masked off which I believe it is. If I were to, if I were to just polygroup that and see that selection set real quick, yeah, that's about right. Okay, that's perfect. So now we're gonna come up here to Subtool, and we're going to extract, and I'm gonna do a single-sided geometry extraction. So I'm gonna go zero thickness, and I'm gonna hit extract, and then I'm gonna say accept, and that's gonna give me this shape right here that looks a lot like this. But you'll notice that is masked off, and that is perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, lazy mouth with lasso every day. It's cool. Absolutely. Lazy mouse with the lasso gives you nice, cleaner selections and definitely helps you out. Is there a chance to see the live somewhere later? Yes, Ali, absolutely. Our ZBrush Live stuff is always on the YouTube channels, either the ZBrush YouTube channel or the Maxon YouTube channel, um, the training team, all that where you're watching it right now on... On YouTube, it will be live there later. It usually takes like a few minutes after the stream to kick back, and they always get chaptered. So if you go back, for example, here, if I were to open up, uh, if I were to go to my YouTube here, just go up to YouTube real fast, and then type in, Joe, I just come here to Pixelogic, actually. Boom, there it is. If I were to go to videos, you can actually come back and always see some of the other live streams. You can actually come up here to the live section, scroll on down, and you'll see some of the past streamers, because a lot of streamers also stream here. So we had Shane Olsen, and we had Ara that was here, and then Layla and a few others. This was the last time I went live. So you, yes, it's always there. And then when you click on one, again, if I were to make this a little bit bigger, 
You can actually see all the chaptering that's done at the bottom. That's a big shout out to Dr. Sassy. He's somebody in the background who comes through and actually helps chapters things up. So yes, it's the long winded answer. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and clean this mesh up a little bit. So you can see here it's masked off a little bit. Um, it's always masked off when you make an extraction, but there's always just a little bit of a nice little gradient. And that's what we want because we're gonna clean this up. So the first thing is I want these edges to be super crispy, okay? I want them to be really nice. And right now they're a little, a little wavy, a little wavy. We don't want that. So we're gonna come on up to deformation and we're gonna focus on right up here, polish by features, not groups, features. And there's this little bubble, it's a little, little dotty dot. That little dot right there, we're gonna open that up. That's, a, that's an algorithm change. So basically that's gonna say, with the bubble closed, it gives you a pretty decent, a nice decent uh, polish. But if you open that up, it's gonna be even stronger. So for example, if I were to just close this and we'll zoom in and I do, this might be kind of a bad example. So I'm actually gonna pull this out just a little bit, just for demonstration purposes. So you see how it's a little bit here. If I were to come here and polish by features with it closed, it does a pretty good job, you know, but it's still really, really wavy. But if I were to open that bubble up and hit that polish by features, it's still a little bit wavy, but it's just a little bit stronger. And so I could do that a few more times and a couple times in, it's gonna give me a really nice solid straight line. So go ahead and give it a shot and see which one actually fits the needs for you. But with that mask, it's only affecting the edges and not the whole geometry. And that's exactly what I want get that nice clean straight edge because now we'll clear that mask and we're going to do a little secret sauce time here where we're going to go up to zebra mesher and we're going to start with we got about 84,000 active points so we're going to start with 15 target polys which give me about 15,000 so that's going to cut it almost into a, a sixth and then let's go keep groups turn the smooth groups down to zero and the reason for that is I just don't want my mesh to, ch to change too too much I'm not worried so much that it's actually going to be shrinking. I'm more worried that it's just, you know, I just want a nice clean control. So that's going to help me just keep everything about the same size as it currently is. And then adaptive size down to zero, but turned on. So all the quads know to adapt to the mesh, but keep around the same quad size. And if we go ahead and hit zebra mesher, bada bing, bada boom, give it a few seconds, take a sip of coffee. Perfect. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come through here and I'm just going to cut this in half, hit retry, and I'll do this a few times. And the reason why I start, I start higher is I want to actually see what the mesh looks like and then I can step down and get better topology a little bit quicker. And you can see I have a pole that's over here and these poles aren't, aren't exactly what I want. So I'm going to open up my brush and do a zebra mesher guide. I'm going to come in here and just add a couple points saying that's the way I want my edge flow to be. So something like that. And same thing on the back side. I want my edge flow to look something like such. I'm going to turn curve strength up to 100%. And then if I go ahead and say zero measure. Yeah, that's better. I do a little bit of relax smooth. There we go. Perfect. Now from here, I can come in, set this up in the middle, and then we'll do a little bit of a scale inflate. And then now we can actually come through here with like the move brush. We can start setting this up a little bit. Do a little bit of a relaxation, that's okay. There we go. A little all over the place today. There we go. I'll actually scale this down just a little bit just so it starts to intersect. Perfect. Let me actually make sure I close my teams. Let's go settings here. Yeah, come on, just close this. Ugh. Let me just turn this off, there we go. I'm busy, leave me alone. There we go, perfect, all right. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let's see here. 
Uh, hi, I'm Grant. Da, 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 da. Say no, no translation. Still a useful video. I'm grateful for your watch. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, first off, thank you for being here. Yeah, uh, I am English speaking. Um, however, if you do have a question in your in your you know uh, in your language, please feel free to ask it in your language. I, I do tend to utilize Google Translate to help answer the question. So if that's helpful in any way, but yeah, translation's a little hard at the time. Ah, thank you for that. <laughs> Love the hair, thank you. Uh, what's the key control for scale inflate? Awesome question. So the, what I'm currently using right now is with the gizmo, if I open this up right here, if we actually look at the, at the, at this, uh, the yellow circle, usually that's for scaling, right? But if you hover over that, might be a little hard to see, but down at the very bottom, it says control to inflate. This is a little shortcut for it. So while you hover over this, this actually scales up and down. But if you want to inflate it a bit, which for me, this, that actually helps just controls just a little bit. So it's not, a, it's not fully scaling up and down. It's more of just keeping the, the same relative uh, size and shape and just lets me move that up just a little bit. Um, so that would be, that's the way I'm doing it very, very fast. I don't need to, why is that open? Okay, great. Man, I'm all over the place with this computer today. Okay. So now I have something that looks like that. And now we're going to go ahead and get something for his forearms. And again, I'm actually going to take a little bit of creative control with this. And because I really liked on this concept, I liked this type of glove that was here. I thought this was fantastic. So I want something very similar to that. So we're going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to come in and first, based on this guy, I make sure there's no mask. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and just mask this section off. I thought I had the mask lasso. So let's come through. Let's see, yep. All right. So I'm gonna come in just like such. And now I'm gonna refine this just a little bit. So I'm gonna make sure I hold control and just do mask pen. And then I'm gonna go ahead, hold alt and get a custom, a little bit more of a custom shape here. Turn on polyframe, we don't need that. I'm gonna want that to kind of come down. Kind of give them like a little bit of an elbow pad, so a little bit of a custom shape. Doesn't have to be super perfect, just has to be close enough for what we want. Sharpen that up just a teeny bit. Now what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna sew this out. You can see that the hand's not welded to each other and that's okay. I don't need to have this part closed so I'm actually gonna mask that off because I'm gonna go ahead and manipulate that the way I would like that to be. But I could always come in and just add a little bit more of a cleaner edge. <clears throat> there we go. So I have something like this and then immediately you guessed it, we're gonna do the same process. Yeah, that should be, that should be fun. So let's come here, sub tool, and let's do extract zero thickness and say accept, perfect. Now we got this guy. And we can clean this up the exact same way. What I will do actually, is I'm gonna clear the mask on the border. I'm gonna make just some adjustments to the mesh just by using the move brush. Zoom in just a teeny, teeny bit. And just clean this up just a little bit. Say something like that. And now what we could do is we can actually utilize our masking and we could do mask by border, invert that. And that gives us a very similar mask to what we had before. And then we're gonna come up here to deformation, polish by features, boom. Now see, that was actually a little too strong. So we didn't need to do that. Clear that, and I can actually correct that a little bit faster manually. All right, let's see remesh this bad boy. Let's take a look at this, perfect. Looking at just the main shape of it. And this will be fine at five, keep groups. Let's see what we get. Boom, 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 boom. Actually, that's not too bad. Let's hit retry, retry, 
Okay, that actually is pretty good. Has some pretty decent edge flow to it, actually. So that's not extremely low, but it is holding the shape. So I do like this one. So I'm gonna retry one more time. Oh, that looks pretty good too. Actually, that looks really good. So let me move this. Okay, so this point right here, I'm actually not really liking this so much, this edge. So what I'm actually thinking about doing is let's hover over this point. Let's open up Z Modeler. So BZM, hover over this point. I'm gonna do stitch. I'm gonna stitch these two points together. And then let's grab the move brush, kind of clean that little edge flow up. And then now, of course, the thing with, with any type of good topology is that it's all about edge flow control. And I definitely want to make sure that there's a little bit of a hard edge to this in the beginning so I can have some nice control to that. So what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm going to go Z, B, Z, I'm going to go back to Z modeler. So BZM, I'm going to hover over here and I'm going to insert a single edge loop and I'm going to add in some edge loop control. Just adding in a couple points. Now for this part right here, this kind of comes over just a little bit. So we can actually use the move brush. Actually, you know what? Let's not do that. The reason why is because we can create a secondary flap and have it doesn't have to be welded. So let's do that instead. Let's actually have this end here, which will be pretty good do a little bit of a control, and then we can have a secondary flap that attaches to it. I think that'll be better. Okay, so then what we will do instead is here, we're gonna come in and just add a little bit of edge loop control by hovering over Z modeler and then adding another edge loop. Yeah, something like that. Okay, that'll give us a little bit more control on that aspect. And then I'm going to go hold control and do a inflate just so we could see that separate piece. And now I'm going to give some color to this because this thing looks not good. This thing looks too white. So let's actually give it, I'm going to give his body a gray. So I'm going to control object. Let's just give it a gray. And then his gloves are white or reddish actually. What are they? They're red. So let's give a red. Let's go fill object. Yeah, fill object, his gloves here are white. So I'll actually give him an off-white, more of a gray. Okay, his face is blue. So we'll give him a blue face. And then let's go back to red and have this be red. Let's start getting a little bit of color in there. Now, here's the cool part. I'm actually going to load in another ZTL because we made the tail and this one doesn't have the tail, right? So I'm going to go back to downloads and I think under version four, three or four, let's go back to version three. Yep, here's his tail. So we already built this. So I'm not going to rebuild this because we already did that. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and I can either merge this together, then copy it, or I could put this in a folder, call this tail, right? Throw this in. And then I could copy this folder by going to Z plugin. And then I can go to, no, yeah, Subtool Master, Z plugin, Subtool Master, copy folder. Go back to this guy. And then I can drop to the bottom. And then I could paste this in, plugin, and then paste folder. Now I have this tail here. And I can move these two together. This is actually, the placement's pretty good but his tail's also blue. So then let's go ahead and get that same color. Let's fill this in and then I'll check the chat because I'm sure I've missed a few things. All right, what's up? What's up, Skizzle? How you doing? Skizzle, yay! Uh, let's see. Um, okay, hey, and something I've been curious about. Sometimes when I open up ZTLs from other artists or online stores, some of their materials come in super shiny. And when I try to change the materials, I can't seem to change them unless I use fill object with material. Any thoughts? Okay. 
That's a super great question. So if you're, if you're importing a ZTL and the materials aren't coming in um, correctly, it's because you don't have that material there. This is where a project file would be better because if you got the project file and they saved it with that material, that material gets stored with that project file, but that's not quite how it works with ZTLs. So um, what I would recommend doing is instead of loading the ZTL, what you could ultimate, well, hmm, no, I don't, that's a good question. If it's already baked in and it's super shiny, you just can't find it, you have to fill it with another material. I don't think there's another way around that that I can think of at the time. Because um, if you have the Z, if you have the if you have the ZBrush project, you could load from project. However, it might still load the material if it's baked in too. So if that's the case, you would just have to choose another material and change it. However, if you're in 2023, you could do this very quickly. Instead of going through and selecting each and every single one and then trying to fill that material with something else, so let's say you have multiple materials. For example, like this this suit right here, so this guy. So let's say I want to actually fill the suits I, the suit parts that I just created, right? So I want to fill this with the material and this with the material. Um, so this guy. Okay. Okay, so let's say, why is it selecting already? All right, so let's say I want to fill just these parts with a different material this one and then these two arms here so with the pizza box selected which is actually called the transpose all selected tools and that's a mouthful but that's what it's called but the pizza box you grab that and you select the things that you would want to actually have so then you hit Control f with that and as long as you have more than one sub tool it's going to go ahead and populate those things together so you say yeah i want these things together and say uh suit armor whatever perfect now that's all in a folder that got all transferred to a folder. Now, the way you can go through this is find a material that you want. So let's say, let's say we filled this with, let's say initially we filled it with this thing and then we got this one that's filled with a rough metal. Yeah, it's fine, just skip for now. So we did this, right? So now you have two different aspects and you wanna fill everything with the same material. It doesn't matter how many materials you have, everything that's within that folder. Go into the main folder, select the one thing that you have and let's say we want to fill this with skin shade four. So you come up here and say, fill that object with skin shades four. And then, I'm sorry, instead of going through that process and doing that whole thing, right? Which is what we did. What you would do instead is come on down to, let's say, what is it? It is poly, poly paint. Come up here to poly paint. There's now the fill color option, which is the exact same fill color option that is up here in the color section. But the reason why it's placed here too is because there's a new feature called apply last action. And this goes for materials. So I could pick a new material, let's say like set up here, right? So you see that this has skin shade four, this has something else. What I could do is with this material set, I could say fill color. And now I can come up to the folder and you'll see right here, there's the big button that says apply last action to all sub tools that's been there. So that's if I wanted to apply everything to my entire list, but I can control this with just my folder and I have it here as well. So I could say apply last action to that folder. So now if I pick a totally different material like, like glass, right? And then I say, same thing. I come on down here into the tool menu, fill color with that material, come on up, apply last action to everything, would do everything, but doing this within the folder set, let's change that back, let's come up here, boom, and then I would say come up to the cog wheel and apply last action. So I would say if you currently have the color fill color, uh, fill object button somewhere on a custom UI, remove this one and put this one instead, because this one is act, that apply last action is for anything within the tool menu itself. So that would be the main difference. Um, but again, if you're bringing in a ZTL from another application and that material's just not there, ZBrush is trying to find it. And if it's not there, it's gonna give it something weird. So you, have, you do have to fill it in. Um, if I do come up with another solution or think of it in the meantime, I'll let you know. But I think that's about it.
Okay, boom, um, boom. And uh, now we can retopo, but Z remesher and Z model with uh, Z model any assets we want for a game, right? Oh, Omar, are you asking? Are you asking like you could? Can you just use Z remesher for a game asset, like a prop or something? In so, in a sense, I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to preface a quick caution here because the more important question to this question isn't whether or not you could just use Z remesher to just retopo something. The real question is, what does your team want from you to do? So if you're doing a game asset, right? If you can get a super clean mesh from Z remesher, right? So something, let me actually get a different color. Now I've filled all this in. Let's actually go back to skin shape four. Let's come down here, let's fill this, and then let's just fill everything. So if you're working on a team and you're sitting there and you're trying to make a game prop and all of a sudden you know you're like hey i i did this z remesher and it looked really really good and i think this is this is game quality like this could be used in an engine check with your team that's first and foremost um, there are instances where i have personally used z remesher to get a very clean mesh and i showed it to my to the team i was working on and they were like yeah this looks great sounds great you know so it is possible yes however I highly encourage you to double check with the team, and this is the important part, double check with your team, the animation team, your art director, everyone, and just ensure that the work you're handing them in is acceptable. Because um, at the end of the day, they have a vision, everyone in the company has an idea, a thought process, and they want to they want to adhere to a standard. And the thing with manual retopoing is that you're getting really good edge flow control and it's important to note that that's the goal of manual retopoing is just knowing that your edge flow is really, really nice. Now, that being said, I, I, I am talking to environment artists that actually are like, hey, I'm able to, to you know, take my environments and move them in straight from ZBrush into Unreal because it's just getting easier with the way Unreal handles things. So it is possible, but I implore you, definitely check with your team, definitely communicate with them and make sure that it's something that everyone on the team is in agreement on, not just the fact that it's that you could do it. Does that make sense? So I fill this color now. Just fill that color, and let's fill that color. But yeah, but all, by all means, you can actually get really good results. That all being said, you can get really good results with zebra mesher, and it is highly possible to get something that looks really, really nice. Um, so. It is very much possible, yes. You just want to make sure that you're supporting your team. Okay, let's do let's do this right here. Let's see, boom, boom, boom. Is it possible to customize spacebar menu? This spacebar menu, I do not believe it's possible to customize this, but you can create a custom you can create a custom menu that then you tag to the space bar itself. So if you create like a custom interface, because any one of these are control Z possible. So I believe like, for example, if I wanted to, if I wanted to call up, if I wanted to call up the right now, like perspective is set to P. If I press and hold control and alt and tap and then hit something, right? Hmm, actually, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> Literally, just don't do that. Actually, no. The spacebar is dedicated to spacebar is dedicated to that space. Never mind. That is, you're getting a harsh no from me. I don't think so. I literally just tried it, and now I have both perspective turning on <laughs> with my spacebar as well as the other thing. No, I just broke it. Um, yeah, don't do that. Okay, let's go back up here to hotkeys. And okay, so I made a mistake with my hotkeys and now I want to restore. There we go, that should be better. Okay. Just I just boasted it. No, I think the space bar is dedicated to to just what can be done in ZBrush. Okay, let's go ahead and save this T post version out and finish let's finish doing this block out process. Now let's see here. Um oh very handy, thanks for the help. Absolutely. I uh, didn't know you could transpose all. Yes, absolutely you could. That's a great way to go about doing it. Okay, cool. Hopefully that answered your question, uh, Omar, about about Z remesher, Z remodeler, and stuff like that. Just so you do know, just to expand on that a little bit further, you can do manual retopoing 
with the Z modeler brush. In fact, that was actually an update in 2020. I want to say 2020, but maybe it was 2021. Um, there's been so many features so fast, but there's actually a dedicated, there's a dedicated Retapo brush, um, Z modeler brush up here on the spotlight, hit the comma key, go up to brush, and then you go over to your Z modeler, you go to brush, do, 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 where are we? Z modeler right here, double tap it. And then you actually have a slice version and then you have a topology version. The slice version is set up to do slicing. And if you don't know what that is, real quick, let's actually show you that feature. Cause that's also a really cool feature that I don't think gets a lot of love. And I use it all the time. In fact, if you guys have seen my Darth Grogu piece, I use this in my Darth Grogu piece specifically. But here, right, so I can come up and go back to the comic key. I'm gonna hit the slice, double tap that, get this section here. And what this is able to do is actually slice through different sections of my mesh, right? And I can create really custom shapes. And then I can actually come in here and I can actually go poly group and I want to I want to do a fill and I can actually fill in that custom section. So I can come in on a corner and start making custom cuts, right? And then I can do a fill in that spot. So that's the slice version of it. And that's actually a really cool feature. Well, with the topology version, right? What this will allow you to do is it'll allow you to actually come in and do some retopoing on the fly. So this works in conjunction with the um, half primitive because we have a single poly here. So if I wanted to start retopoing his legs, right? I can literally draw this out, okay? And then I can split this off so I can go split unmasked points. And then I can come here to this guy. And now I have this here. And now with that Z, Z model retopo, what makes this so cool is that when you hover over an edge, it's already set to extrude, but it also has snap to surface. Same thing with the points. It has move, snap to surface, but if I hover over the face, it has a do nothing. And the reason why you could do this is you can actually come in here, right? And start quadding things out. Now it's a little hard to see what's happening. So I can come in here, turn on transparency. And then as I come through, it actually will respect the geometry that's underneath. And I can start dragging out all these quads and get this nice and clean. So you can, I can start moving this in. I can also drag out an edge, tap alt and get a secondary one. Or I could drag out and I could tap alt again and I can start getting multiple iterations of this. So I can come in here, drag this out, and this is snapping to that surface. So I can quickly make some cool shapes. What I can also do with this is I can hover over an edge, right? Hover over edge, tap Alt, get a single one, and then I can customize this. I can come through here and actually say how many of this extrusion do I want? You know, I want, you know, maybe, maybe I want higher row set. So maybe I want, Let's go back over here to edge here. So maybe I want five. Oh, sorry, that actually sets a one. Maybe on number of rows, I want five here, right? So I drag this out and now I'll get five. So again, just drag that out and I actually get five of these. And so this was actually a really cool way to get, get some retopoing done. That's, that's the newer way in ZBrush to go about doing that if you wanted to go that route. So definitely a much simpler process to do that, um, or you could do Z-Sphere Retopo. So you can do retopoing inside a ZBrush and I definitely implore you to give it a shot. So that's one way you can do it. So just to expand on that further, but just going back to the Z uh, remesher question, just make sure that you just check with your team and that it's everything that they also want it to be. Yep. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's see. Boom, 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 boom. I have a question. Hey, what's up, Casey? How you doing? Um, I have a question for you, Ian. Freelance. I do freelance work and want to find full-time employment. However, most of the job posting require a degree. Can a strong portfolio neg uh, negate this? Oh, that's, that's a fantastic question. Um, and so there's a, there's a lot of complexity to that question 
Um, we're going to start doing this uh, this knee uh, the shin pad, by the way, as we as we go through this. There's a lot of there's a lot more to that question. Um, you know, it's it's not as simple as just being like, hey, you know, is this fact? Um, I I personally do not have a college degree. I was never able to go to college. I didn't have the benefit of doing so, but I did seek out other types of um, higher educational learning. Um, some of you might know that I was, uh, uh, well, I'm still a part of the 3D Character Workshop, um, but Shane Olson was a direct influence in my early uh, professional days uh, because he really like showed me the ropes and uh, in a lot of processes. And then that in itself gave me weight. Having education helped me get further jobs because people were like, oh man, okay, you know, he's, he's, he's doing other aspects. So it's always beneficial to have education. Like that's always gonna be a thing. However, yeah, um, I never went to college. I don't have a degree, but my portfolio did speak for itself in a lot of aspects. So a good portfolio in my experience can trump education. However, it's all in what they're looking for too. So it never hurts to apply for a job if even if it says, you know, needs, you know, college degree, it doesn't hurt to apply for it even if you don't have that degree. If you meet all the other uh, requirements, there's no sense in like, you know, not applying for it. You should absolutely try because you never know. You don't know what they're looking for. You don't know how many candidates come in. Um, it just depends. And again, it depends on what you're trying to go for. Um, college is, you know, not, not minimizing colleges in any way. Um, a lot of what you learn from college is networking. And a lot of what you get out of that experience too is just the know-how of the industry um, as, as such. So not getting into any crazy logistics on that. Just that's a lot of what you learn when you're in college from the people I've spoken to. And because of that, um, it's just helpful to pull from that wheel because they're already used to doing it. So again, kind of just re, re, uh, reiterating, definitely apply for the job. Don't feel that, like that shit outs you because you don't know. They might actually be like, you might be the best candidate and you just don't, you just don't have the degree and that's fine. So give it a shot. I'm encouraging you to apply is my point. <laughs> but yeah, it is important to think about. So So great question. That was that was that was a really solid question. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Hey, Emperor of Cheese, what is happening? Okay. This is like terrible topology down here. Like this is like nasty. So let's get that Z remesher guide. Let's actually throw up an edge here. Let's see if we can clean this up with Z remesher. So I'm gonna say same. <laughs> that was nasty. That was not good. Okay, let's go 50. No, let's go zero. Actually, let's do a little bit of an adaptiveness with 50 curve. Let's back this up here. And I'm actually going to go ahead and increase the resolution a little bit back to two. There we go. Fix that just a little bit. Sometimes the mesh is just too low. And you're just ending up fighting, you're fighting too low of, of geometry. So like now I have, okay, so now I have this issue, which is like, that's, that's fantastic. So let's bring our Z remesher guide in. And then let's change this up just a little bit. Say same. Okay, that's better. That's looking a little bit better. I didn't realize I had that that there okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to try something so i'm going to come here to this guy right i'm going to do a control stamp on that on that history bar up there and then i'm going to go back to this guy and i'm going to come up here to sub tool project and i'm going to project history no color and the reason why i did that is it gave me some of that geometry back it gave me some of that those forms and it fit it to this a little bit better not perfectly, but close enough. Okay, that's fine. And now we're gonna come here to geometry and I'm gonna go up to dynamic subdiv, turn on dynamic, and I'm gonna give it some thickness. And now I can kind of clean this up a little bit and we'll do some manual work 
on this. Smooth that down just a teeny, teeny bit. Clean that up. There we go. Give it just a little bit of thickness. And I'm going to do the same thing here, and then we're going to move on to the shins. I got distracted. Uh, that's usually what I do. Because <laughs> I'm going to go dynamic thickness. So see here with that dynamic thickness, how it's actually preserving that shape. That's the importance of edge flow right there. Now, if I give it some thickness here, I got something that actually works out pretty well. That's a little too thick. So let's go 0 0.005. That should be fine. And let's come here. Let's actually fill this color RGB. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will apply. That's why I asked. Uh, I quickly click away and then uh, then I go to, go to the next. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. I'm I'm definitely in a I'm definitely in a mood of just like sculpting and hanging out and so everything like everything's been good. Life is good. I'm just like, you guys, you know, like sometimes you're just like, I just wanna, I just need to create something. I just need to do a thing, you know? And it was funny, if for those of you who are coming into the beginning of the stream, or who weren't here for the beginning of the stream, but you come in now, um, we actually had a small little chat about like, I actually ended up hating what I did in the beginning of this uh, Nightcrawler piece. And um, sometimes that just happens. You know, sometimes you're just not in love with your piece. Um, but what's cool is the, the, what I've come to realize is that a lot of times it's just good to get those bad ideas out quickly because then you'll be able to like focus in on good ideas because then you know that like, okay, this, this didn't work. And because of that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pivot. I'm going to move. And so it was actually kind of nice to know that the original idea I had just isn't working in the way I want it to. So now I'm going to change it up a little bit. So I'm happy. I'm happy to report that we are moving in a new direction and that feels good. And this is something too, that like, I think is super important, especially when you get stuck on a project. I have had a lot of people ask and I used to do this all the time. Some of my closest friends have asked like, how do you keep pushing out projects? You're like, you're crazy. <laughs> but then it's, I, I, if I, if I showed you all of the projects that um, I have never completed or that I'm like, I'm going to finish this guys. And then I just don't finish it. Um, and I move on to something else. It's just sometimes inspiration hits differently. Sometimes I'm just like not feeling a piece and, but I've learned a lot from that piece. And I think that's a good distinction as well. Sometimes you'll sculpt something and then you won't finish it, but you learn so much from that piece that you're like, forget it. I just, I need to move past that aspect. Um, it's a compromise. It's a balance for sure. But that's kind of how I was feeling with the original thing that we did with Nightcrawler. Um, and since this is my first X-Men character, um, like truly, um, I wanted to actually give it a little bit more attention than I have some of my other pieces. Because I can tell some of my other pieces have just been like, yeah, I did a thing. Life's cool. Let's move on. Um, this, this one, I'm like, you know what? No, I need to, I need to actually like hyper focus in on this and get this looking better so so i think it's i think it's you know it happens from time to time and i think when if we're open about it as artists it's definitely going to help you grow and move on and stuff i freaking love this song i don't know if you guys can hear it but i love this song <laughs> i don't know can you guys hear the audio i got playing i've set up my whole new setup let me make sure you guys are probably like, what are you talking about? It's quiet as day in here. I think that's what it is. Hold on. Yep. I just realized the songs were not going through. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go, boop. We're going to we're gonna bag it up, and we're going to play the song again. Just for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, we could bump it up a little bit. I listened to Pretzel Rocks, and this song is called The Long Road. <laughs> it's one of those, like, YouTube safe stuff. 
Oh, hey, Sleepy Mushroom, I don't mind you asking. I'm working on Nightcrawler, um, and we're blocking him out and getting him situated. This project has been a little bit slower than originally intended, but I'm actually having fun with the slow process. I'm not in the mood to rush him. No, I didn't mean to project. What was I talking about? What was I doing? I didn't do anything! <laughs> Let's go to extract. Are you guys watching the show I Think You Should Leave on Netflix? Because if you are, you got to tell me what you think about it. I freaking love it. It's crazy. It's a crazy show. I've been watching it for a while now. And I'm like, oh, I freaking love this show. It's so wild. Everything about it is just insane. All right, let's come in here. Let's actually get some of this edge loop cleaned up. Is anybody like me? I'm curious. I'm curious. This is this is a question for you, chat. This is a question for you guys. Do you guys, when you're sculpting, do you ever listen to a song on repeat when it hits you right in the feels and you're just like, I this is the mood. Like I can tell you drawings I did back in high school and sculptures I've done, exactly what song I was listening to because it like hit a vibe that just resonated with me so well. Or am I the crazy one? <laughs> We're all friends here. It's okay if you do. <laughs> okay, I'm going to scale this up just a little bit. Okay, great. All the time? Yes. Oh, yes. Did you give? <laughs> yeah, did you give? <laughs> yeah, I've seen some of that show. It's so funny. Absolutely. Yeah, my hand moves. Yes, absolutely. I'll just be sculpting. And this is how this song is currently hidden. Like, it's crazy. But sometimes, like, sometimes I'll be sculpting at night, but I'm not on my Discord. And it's because I'm, like, zoned in on a vibe, and I can't, I can't like, talk. I just have to, like, sculpt. I just have to work. Um, that actually happened to me with the, with the shark project that I'm currently working on. I was like, I have to do this. And this song just hit that way right now. It's so cool. Okay, um, so now we're gonna go ahead and zero mesh this. Now here's the cool part. I filled it with color, and now I'm gonna do a zero mesher. And this is something I wanted to call out in the new version of 2023, is that there is a keep poly paint option. And so here I can actually keep that poly paint, which is nice. So if you did end up filling it, you don't have to do that again and again. This song's pretty cool too. All right, okay, that's actually looking pretty good. So let's go again, we're gonna do half, we're gonna hit retry. I'm gonna do this a few times, see what kind of edge flow we get. Okay, all right, so we broke this right here. So I'm gonna back this up just a little bit. Now you see this little section, this little guy right here. Let's go to Z modeler, let's hover over this point. I'm gonna stitch this to this, and then we're gonna move this back in its place. So we're gonna grab this down. I'm gonna move this in. It's gonna give me some better, better edge flow, just a little bit. If I'm gonna, if I have to have a pole, let me control the pole. Now I'm actually gonna run this across the edge like such. Say something like that. I'm gonna hit same. Boom. Yeah, okay, that's actually pretty good. That actually did pretty good. What is happening here? Why are you doing this to me? Thank you. <laughs> Zero measure guide, perfect, all right. That's better, that's looking pretty good. Let's go half, let's hit retry. Or right, let's just, let's actually just hit zero measure instead. Okay, there we go. That's actually not too bad. I can deal with that pole the way it is. I can hit D for dynamic, say yes. And then I can come up here, dynamic, and I think I had 0 0.005 thickness. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Now for this, what I can do, again, I want to actually kind of do a little bit of an inflate. And then what I'm going to do here is come in 
I'm gonna actually soften this mask up and I'm gonna do a little bit of a stretch. Say something like this. There we go. Maybe a little bit of an inflate. Move that forward just a bit. Okay. Okay, now we can start working on the face a little bit. And I'm gonna, I think we're gonna do a, we're actually gonna do a block out of this. Like I actually wanna sculpt his face. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna stick this here, gonna move that over. And then let's actually, let's, okay, first off, actually, let's do this. We're actually going to do the pizza box. We're gonna add in the other things here. So I want this guy added. I'm gonna group this in. I'm gonna hit always and call this armor. So I regrouped these earlier as a demonstration, but you can regroup a group into a new group. Yeah. <laughs> so I can end up doing all that. So what I can do now is I can pick this guy right here and I'll call this, this, this. Hands and feet, knees and toes. I'm gonna come in there, call this his body. So I'm regrouping everything very, very quickly. I don't need this version of the body anymore, so let's delete that. And then here is now his head, right? So now we're gonna come through here. I'm gonna stamp this guy. And now I'm actually gonna just hit solo for a second. And I'm gonna keep this kind of as a rough estimate of what the head should actually, rough size of what the head should be, okay? And now I'm actually gonna go ahead, let's go to V2. Let's just hide everything but the head. And I'm gonna go insert a new sphere. Okay, I'm gonna hit frame F. We're gonna kind of bring this down. Okay, now with this head here, I want to actually work with this in world center, not off of, uh, not off over here up in time. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Never mind. Forget everything I just said. We're gonna actually gonna move this up. I'm gonna turn on transparency. Now I'm going to just get a rough size of his head shape. So I'm gonna move this here like such. I'm just using this to make sure that the size is gonna be relatively fine. So I'm actually gonna squish this area down here, giving a little bit more of a dome shape. Hit solo for a second. And we're actually gonna use clip curve. Now check this out, with clip curve, here's a little bit of a, a little bit of a finger Jenga, no, not Jenga, finger twister type action. So if I press the space bar, right, I get this here. But what a lot of people may not know is that if I press and hold control and shift and then press the space bar, I get a new option, which is really, really cool, right? But if I want to adjust the intensity of my clip curve, instead of coming up all over here, I press the space bar first, then press control shift, and then I can adjust the intensity of my clip curve. So I can do that from the space bar there. So now I can actually come in and say, I want to clip this in, say something like that, and give me just a little bit of a dome shape in this section. So I can do it that way as well. It's a little bit of a finger twister, but it actually works out pretty well. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna control duplicate this. I'm gonna rotate this around and we're gonna start getting a basic head shape. And I'm gonna clip curve this as well to get a little bit of kind of a skull block out here. Okay. Nope, oh, wrong way, let's go here. Let's get a little bit of that chinny chin chin action. And I'm also using that kind of sphere just to give me a little bit of uh, placement rule. There we go. Now what I'm gonna use here is I'm gonna use my damn standard, get a decent brush size, and start just kind of sketching out a few things. Just kind of sketch out where that jaw is going to be. Clip that a little bit more. That's really terrible there. That's fine. I'm going to smooth that down. Now, the thing with heads is that A, locking them out, practicing them, is always going to be beneficial. But B, the thing you're really going to want to practice with heads a lot is just getting more than just a couple spheres in there. We want a few other proportions. I want to actually like Mac the ears make sure the ears are there that give me a good placement as well. So we're going to need a couple other things besides just his jaw and such. Let's 
something like that. So now I'm going to grab the IMM brush. Let's make sure I'm not missing anything. It's been times I have the song repeat all day. Oh my God. Yeah, I've done, I, dude, I have done songs all day for days. I've done one song in like three days because I just couldn't stop. <laughs> Let's see. Um, hey, Ian, what specifically didn't you like about your first approach to Nightcrawler? What would uh, you be doing differently? Comics legend, fantastic question. That is a fantastic question. Um, let me actually just come through here real quick. And I will, I will, I will break down exactly what I didn't like about it. I'm gonna come in here. Let's turn on local symmetry, but not with the new dynamic because I actually want the old way of doing it. And the reason why is because I'm actually using the gizmo to deform it. And we're gonna get some ear action up in here. Okay. So the, what I didn't like about it, and let's actually move on over to the pose. Okay. So there was a couple poses we did. We did this pose here. First off, let me just save this real fast. I'm just gonna hit save. So we did this pose here. And ultimately what I didn't like about this was it something about it just, it feels wrong. Um, I like the lines of action. I like the direction and the kind of, uh, the overall like flow of what is happening with him, but there's not enough information here. And also too, because I was gonna attempt this asymmetrically, I was actually kind of with my time and the things I wanna achieve with this piece, I was debating on like, how much anatomy do I wanna really spend focusing? And I just really wasn't gonna be doing that too, too much. You always have to fix anatomy when you're posing. But in this case, I was like, well, I need to know what pose I'm gonna be landing on. So I thought if I can get a good pose in that I like, I could just work from that section because he's gonna be a statue. So that was the first thought. But as I was doing it, I was like, you know what, there's too much here and there's still not enough information that I want to give me the look and feel that I'm going for. So everything here, this is my block out. This is like an idea that I'm still kind of falling in love with. And then there's this guy right here. This was the initial pose. I hated this pose out the gate, but again, it was like, well, this is kind of the base idea of what we'd be going for. So we went from this to this, but ultimately at the end of the day, it's like, okay, I've the way I would approach these actually would be, it's not necessarily a different method. It's a different mindset. It's what I'm looking at. That's more bothering me. So the things about this that I'm just not feeling like in my gut, I'm literally like, mm, this is, this is not that great. These are what I'm labeling as my kind of bad ideas. Not that I wouldn't go back and retry this pose, but the approach and how I went about it is probably not really working for me at this time. So I wanted to take a step back and really reiterate that the whole point of the project is to kind of enjoy it, have fun, but also get something that looks really, really nice. And I just, I'm realizing I need more information. So in the end, there's a new, like I wanna change the style a little bit. I'll probably wanna lean in a little bit more away from this base mesh and I wanna move it more into my own custom head. So there are just some things about it that I'm like, you know what, let me just let me just go through this and kind of fix it up myself and just give me something a little bit different. So I always preach, if you're not in love with what you've done, it's okay to pivot, change it, kind of that sort of speak. And that's currently where I'm just at with it. I just wasn't super in love with it. So yeah. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take the I'm gonna take the trim dynamic. So BTD, so BTD, there it is, perfect. Pick the different color. And we're just gonna go in here. Let's actually do I like to work with like the standard material. Let's kind of just do a little bit of a rough a little bit of a rough pass here. Just get a little bit more of that head shape that I want. I'm also kind of trying to find where the uh, skeleton structure is living. So kind of carving in just a little bit. Let's get some of the cheekbone action, that sort of stuff. Maybe pull this in just a little bit. Nah, that's too much. Still not enough information there. So let's actually go ahead and 
Let's push in his eye sockets just a little bit. So just using a move brush, kind of get that section. Get the brow up there a little bit, a little bit of a different forehead. There we go. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah, sometimes you just don't love a thing. Okay, let's do something like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and with these ears here. I'm gonna kind of rotate these ears out a little bit. And now I'm just kind of looking at the placements of where these ears are gonna go. I'm always looking at the center of the head. There we go. And he has some nice pointy ears, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Man, it's crazy how much, like, an hour's already passed. It's crazy. Okay. Let me go ahead and take a look at some of his ear shapes. I always love how they're kind of, kind of like what I expect on a vampire. I love it. I mean, it makes sense. It's Nightcrawler. Okay. On the back of the head here, I'm actually going to go ahead and kind of smooth this down just a little bit. I'm also going to give him a neck base. So again, I'm just really focused on getting the main, the main shapes of this done. So let's give him a, a neck. Okay, what we're going to do now is I'm actually going to hide this. in here all right let's take a look at this Woo, nice nice okay that's all the way over here perfect we're gonna want to match a few things right he has a tiny head right now <laughs> that's that is okay so if i turn this up yeah obviously my head's a little bit smaller that's fine so we're gonna scale this up a little bit get it a little bit better matched Boom, something like that. And if I turn on transparency, okay, perfect. So now I can come in and grab this guy. And I can actually just start making some bigger changes. There we go. Okay. We're getting in, we're moving into a direction, which is nice. Now let's go ahead and give him a nose. And actually what I'm going to do right at the gate is I am going to, I still love Dynamesh. Dynamesh is forever. It's forever my baby. I love it. So I'm going to turn on groups and I'm going to kick this up to be a lower topology. But I want to make sure I'm not welding anything. There we go. Keep it a little low like that. It's just how I like to work. If you use uh, if you use Sculptress and then you use um, Remesh by Union, I, that's also a super awesome option. Okay, just kind of also using this secondary mesh to get like a nice eye line, something that I think makes sense. Doop de doop. What's up, Ben Vajar? How you doing? Hello, hello. Has Ebers been crashing for anyone else after leaving it idle? Um, not that I'm aware of, but you you can absolutely send it on over. Like you can send any questions on over to support, and we could definitely help you out. There, there could be a bug we just don't know about. There's always something, so feel free to report that um, if it's been if it's repeatable for sure. Um, that's always helpful, but if you go to maxon.net, not net G, just net, there we go, and you come up here, and then you go to support, you can actually go ahead and put that in. I actually highly encourage it, because you just, you never know. 
but yeah, um, uh, Jamie brings up a really valid point. If you are, if it's just crashing and you have quick save on, there's a couple things you could do with that. Um, first off, I don't use quick save much anymore. I personally turn it off. Uh, but of course, if you have quick save turned on, there is a button called delete quick saves. And this will actually delete everything from your, your dedicated quick saves folder. So this is a quick way. You just click that and then I'll ask you, hey, do you want to do that? I'm gonna just going to go and say, yeah, boom, done. Um, just because it saves project files, it saves a bunch of information. And so in this quick save folder, um, there's a bunch of stuff and it saves project files and those project files can get very, very big, very quickly. So to that point, that could be, um, you just could not have enough hard drive space. And that leads me to point number two, which is check your hard drive space, which again, Jamie's kind of calling out right now, I believe, but from here, like always try to have, like on your main hard drive space that I work on, I always try to leave about 50%, uh, just because files get pretty big, pretty quickly. Um, that's just kind of a golden rule um, in just computers, not just ZBrush, but just like kind of computers in general. So if you, if you are experiencing any type of crashes, maybe check your hard drive space for that too. But if that's not the case, go to support, check out support, and then say, hey, this is an issue. And support will help with that too. So um, they'll have you set up like a ticket or something like that. Boom. Okay. Hey, that's actually... Okay, let's give him a nose because he knows nothing. <laughs> Dad joke for the win. Okay, so let's come in here and let's actually... I'm going to pick the... What do I, I want to do? Sometimes I use an insert cube for this, for his nose. He's a pretty tough character, so the bridge of his nose is actually something that... Um, the bridge of his nose actually is something that can be ki quite sharp. So I'd do something like this, maybe. Kind of bring this in, push this up a little bit. We're just focused. I'm just more focused on the shape and hitting every wrong button I could possibly imagine. If I bring this in just a little bit here, let's do something like this. Just kind of getting that kind of main, the main idea of his nose out there. There we go. And that's a little wide, so I'm gonna recenter this. Say something like that. And I'm gonna use the regular move brush at this point. And we're just gonna end up pushing this out just a little bit. And rebuild this so it's a little bit more manageable. You could also use the move topological brush. So B, M, and then mine set the J. This will help me move just this without having to mask everything off. Okay. Now what we could do too, I like to do this method where I actually will append my eyes through a macro. So if I go up to macros and I come up here, there's an actual append eyes. And you can't see them, but there they are, <laughs> nice and big. And what I like about these is that they're already set to a nice black color and they already have the toy plastic on it. And I can rotate this and have like a nice pull to this. And then from here, I can go local sim turned on, scale them down. And I can insert these and get them positioned in a way that I like them. So bring this in. And now with these eyes in here, I can come in start placing them. And of course, too, there's always a rule of thumb of the five eyes go across the head. But I wanna place this in a way that makes sense. So I'm gonna place this kind of deep in the socket. And now I can see around these areas. Now, also, this is why I like the poles. We don't want our characters looking boss-eyed or cross-eyed. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of move that, just point it out just a little bit. Then I could tap back 
to this mesh, and now I could start fiddling with this mesh to give me more of an eye shape. Start pushing that back, giving me a nice kind of clear window of what this looks like. And then here in these corners right here, what I like to do with this is I actually like to come through, get a little bit of resolution, because I am working with Dynamesh. And I'm actually going to kind of come in here for just a second. This is a little strong. Let me back this up. Back that up, back that up, back that up. Come up here, get a higher resolution. And then I'm actually gonna turn down the intensity and just get a little bit of a head shape in here. So I come in, let's grab the damn standard. B, D, S, I keep hitting the wrong things, let's see. Kind of block out where everything should be. This is more of a sketch at this moment. Something like that. A very loose sketch. There we go. Awesome, very cool, very cool. X-Mans, what's up, man? How you doing? Yo, I can't stay long. No worries, Titans. How you doing, Titans Revenge? Guys, if you don't know Titans Revenge, you gotta check him out. Check, just, just stop what you're doing. Just check him out real quick. Awesome dude, check him out. Very cool. He does a lot of fun stuff, especially with 3D printing. Just throwing that out there. But I wanted to come by and say, uh, come by the show. Some love. Oh, and send some show. Oh, send. Blah, 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 blah. I can't speak today, Titans. <laughs> wanted to come by and show some love before I have to head out for filming. Enjoy the filming session, dude. Thanks for stopping by, man. Always appreciate you coming in and hanging out. Even though I can't speak to save my life. <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. Getting a little something more of what I'm digging. This is a little bit better. Still a little bit of work I want to do to it, but that's okay. Everything takes time. Everything takes time. And that's something too that, I mean, one of the, one of the things that I loved, and actually uh, I was taking, I'm going to shout out uh, my new sculpting teacher, John Brown. Super awesome dude. If you've never heard of him, check out John Brown. He's an amazing, an amazing sculptor and instructor here at Noman. Well, at Noman, I'm not at Noman, but um, at Noman, I'm able to take the course. And what's cool about it is it said something that really stuck with me. And that was that there's no such thing as immediate gratification in his class. And it's just, it's all about time and patience. And that immediately resonated with me so well. I was like, man, I feel like I've already kind of been starting to apply that in my, in my own personal sculptures but it's just nice to like hear it, you know? Cause I was like, sometimes you feel like, okay, I'm working digitally. I gotta be like super quick. And when the job calls for it, hundred percent. But in this case, it's like, yeah, just like, let's actually just come through and take our time and we'll have a much better result. So I was like, really just like blown away by that whole mindset. Okay. Okay, let's get in a new feel for the way his neck's gonna be, making sure it kind of fits where we're going with this. Which so far, it's actually not too bad. I'm kind of digging it. Let's actually come to this mesh here, and I'm actually gonna cut that down just a little bit so I can mash this together. Okay. I think we're at the point too where I'm actually gonna wanna start kind of welding this together and then we'll get some head shapes. We'll get some, uh, yeah, this'll be good. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna go ahead and save this at the moment here. I'm gonna hit save 
My early blockouts are a little sloppy, um, as in all the different subtools. So I'll call this blockout head, or I'll call this head blockout. So head blockout. And I'm going to save this. I'm going to send this to a new one, and I'm going to call this head merged. Because at this point, I want to start kind of actually doing some sculpture work to it, and this block out is close enough for what I'm actually going for. So now I'm going to go ahead and let's merge this stuff together. I'm going to use Dynamesh. And actually, before I do that, let's actually kind of rotate these ears just a bit more. And I'll do this a lot here. I'll pull this in. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Okay, perfect. Clear this up. Let's go to geometry, dynamesh, turn off groups, re-weld this, and get that welded together. Yeah, there we go. Do a little bit of a smooth. Let's turn off the block out itself. Turn off that local sim. Now I can start coming in and doing some some fun little some fun little sculpture work. Let's give him a little bit of a neck. Give him some very much needed muscles where they belong in the neck right there. Okay, cool. All right, now let's go ahead and start digging this area in here. I like to work on just like digging the eye sockets out. And the eye sockets are not, the orbital of the eyes, they're not round. They're more squarish. If you look at any skull, you'll see there's like this kind of squarish effect to them a little bit. So I like to start my, the eye sockets or the orbital with a nice carving out of a kind of, kind of roundish, but squarish approach, like squarish on the front, but it has a little bit of a curve to it. But I keep that, I keep that kind of main shape intact. If that makes any sense. Let's open this up. There we go. And then this forehead right here. For all foreheads have a little bit of a flat spot. So I'll take like something like the H polish and kind of get that little U shape happening right up there. Just kind of work in this area. Okay, so we kind of dug out the eyes just a little bit. Just kind of bring that up just a bit. Now this part of the ear, this actually, this part's too high. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and just move that down. Say something like that. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and start getting in some, some eyelids. I'm thinking, actually, instead of doing the eyelids this way, let's do this. I'm going to take his, his main eyes. We're going to call this eyes. Okay, I'm going to duplicate these. I'm going to do a inflate. And then I'm going to go ahead and match the material here. So fill that object with that material and that color here we go i'm going to cut these in half so i'm actually going to take the knife curve cut that straight in half like this it's going to give me new poly groups yeah this will be a better approach and now i'm actually going to use a zebra mesher to clean this up so check this out so we're going to do same thing that's why i always call it the secret sauce moment it's the exact same way i use everything with zebra mesher gonna come in here we'll start this at five because this is actually it's already eleven thousand points keep groups down to zero adapt to size down to zero and then we're just gonna cut this in half a few times until we get something low which is exactly what we want kind of rotate this around and actually before i do that i'm going to duplicate them because that will be the lower lids so rotate this around 180 degrees and we'll get that we'll get that placed in there. 
Okay, now we can start messing with these guys. Oh, I didn't mean to do I didn't mean to do it that way. Let's go like that. Let's go ahead and delete hidden. Modify topology and delete hidden. So we have lower and we have upper. There we go. Let's go ahead and hit save. <clears throat> All right, let's get these eyes in place. So he is, his eyes are cool because his eyes are kind of a little bit more demonic and I like that. We'll get some nice shapes going on. Well, what is happening here? Oh, <laughs> uh, I was using the wrong tool. I was using, um, I was using move infinite. Don't want to use move infinite because that's going to infinitely cause some depth issues trying to move this uniformly. Don't do that. Okay, so let's do, there we go, something like that. We'll move this guy up here, we'll hit D, perfect. <laughs> I'm all like breaking stuff. Okay, let's grab this guy, let's move this up. There we go. Hey, what's up, Layla? How you doing? Everyone, you got to say hi to Layla. She's an amazing sculptor here. I am sculpting Nightcrawler. We are going through, we did a voting a few weeks ago, and we were doing Nightcrawler from X-Men, and I'm actually going through and figuring out the head shape right now. Yeah, it's super fun. How are you doing? We got about 30 more minutes. There we go. Okay. Kind of just looking at these eyelids a little bit more. Now we can actually bring a little bit more of the bridge of his nose up. I'm going to use some dynamic, sorry, not dynamic. I'm going to use the damn standard just to kind of emphasize a little bit of this. And his nose, how pointy is his nose? I've seen a few different versions where he has like a really round nose. And his nose actually has like a nice good shape to it. Say right about here, make him strong. Need to kind of kick that in just a little bit. Never seen X Men, but the concept sculpt on the left looks awesome. Well, thanks. Yeah, this is this is kind of <laughs> this is my rough block out here. Yeah, and uh, this is actually, yeah, it's such a cool character. So right now I'm taking a look at here's my reference board. So have a few concepts that I liked. I still love this pose here, so I think we're still gonna go with that. But I'm really liking a lot of this, a lot of this art here, and seeing all these different nice shapes. So we're gonna probably push him a little bit more along this line. We're gonna have to decide if we want to give him a beard, guys. That's that's up to you, chat. Okay, that's gonna be your your your. You don't have to decide today, but if you want to have a beard, I'm kind of digging the beard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Layla streams on Sundays. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Well, Sunday for uh, for me in LA, but Monday for her. So definitely, definitely, you want to check out Layla's streams. Hey, yeah, Layla, when, post. Uh, feel free to post your time when you stream. Cause uh, what is, it's like? I think it's like noon for me in LA.
Uh, you did block out and posed, uh, didn't you? Yes, Mr. White, welcome back. Yes, I did do a block out and pose, and then I ultimately um, hated it. <laughs> I'm all about being transparent. That's uh, something that I've always enjoyed as an artist. And yeah, actually, we talked about it quite, uh, quite, quite in depth at the start of this stream. So there's no such thing, in my opinion, as a bad idea. As in, like, if you have an idea, spit it out there. But there are ideas that don't work, and there are ideas that just, like, you're just, like, not in love with. And some of the stuff I was trying to do and the amount of time I was trying to do it just wasn't going the way I wanted it to. So ultimately, I decided against it and said, you know what? Let's go back. And let's, let's do a little bit. Let's get a little bit more information to what we're working on. So, so yeah. It was definitely something that I'm just like, hmm. Didn't quite love it, but it helped me decide what I don't want to do and move me more into a space of what I do want to do. And if, hopefully that makes sense. In fact, if anything, I would say it's always, it's been super helpful to get out all the ideas that just don't work. Get out all the, all the so I guess there is bad ideas. Get all the bad ideas out. <laughs> just get all the, the, the ones out there like quickly, like say, okay, this is like, this is not going to work. This is a terrible idea. But what's cool about the process, and when you stumble across, upon something, we're only successful through our failures, right? We can only do as much as we can do. And when we fail, instead of looking at that failure as like, oh, I'm no good anymore. My artistry is terrible. I, I suck, which for me, that's, you know, that's a, that's a Tuesday. <laughs> but... In reality, it's like not everything is, is, is working the way you want it to. So you got to work through those moments. And that's what kind of separates, you know, um, your work from a lot of other people's works is that you'll be coming through. And if you can work through those moments and you can find the things that you don't like and learn to pivot, it's just going to make the experience so much easier. And so in that, that being said, um, in this, I was going to do more of an asymmetrical approach to this sculpt. But ultimately, I just ended up not liking what I was doing. It wasn't resonating with me. And instead of sitting here and forcing me to, forcing myself to do a thing, I just decided, you know what? Forget it. Just start over, go back, and try again, and do something that's ultimately um, itchy here. Um, ultimately, that is just going to be, you know, um, a better result. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at with this piece. And I'm starting to dig the new direction. There's still a lot of stuff I want to do, but yeah, that's about where we are. Okay, let's get a little bit of a mouth in here. Doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. See failure as feedback. Absolutely. Yep. Chase, what's up, buddy? Can totally relate. Sort of imposter syndrome that kicks in randomly sometimes, right? No, hundred percent. Yeah, I think it's around one p.m. for you and early, early morning in New Zealand, Australian viewers. Nice. Yeah. So I'm actually uh, working with them in T pose, and then I'll end up uh, moving him. Moving him to a pose as we get more closer to something we like. Yeah, it is funny how, like, just all of a sudden out of nowhere, sometimes you're like, God, I hate this. <laughs> but it's okay. It, happen it happens so much, you know? And I think what's the what I always learn from those processes is that when that, when that starts to happen, um, I just accept it for what it is. I tell myself, okay, you know what? It's not working. We can just go ahead and we can pivot. We could try something else and we can see what, what else is working. Um, but that's why I love staying. This is why I always preach to don't like rush to the finish line when you're trying to like get a sculpt in. Cause if the, if the foundation of the sculpt is not good, then nothing else is going to work. Right? So you want to make sure that like whatever you're attempting to do, you just take your time on that, and then if it's not working, pivoting is only going to be your best friend. Okay. 
like i'll be honest man i used to hate sculpted heads heads terrified me because i was like because to me a character um if you take one character sculpting a full character full body character is equivalent of like sculpting like five characters because the hands in themselves have so much expression there's so much anatomy there's so much happening to the hands and then you have the feet as well that could be like again it's a different animal it's it's there's a lot of information happening there and then of course too you have the head which is where a lot of that expression where a lot of the all of that uh character is living is in the face but then too you have the main body itself and then of course you have um then you have other elements like hair and accessories um and all that stuff just like it builds one character but they're all like big steps and so for me it's all about like finding those steps and kind of working through it and then finding out what works that doesn't work um yeah it's kind of my take on it it's my ramble take on it my character heads always look funny before they look good Gotta push through it. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Love your work. I love your sketches. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, this is actually why I've started taking a traditional um, sculpting class, because I want to actually approach sculpture differently, which I've been told, and I can already see actually. I've been told that actually traditional sculpting is going to help improve your digital sculpting. And so for me, I'm like, man, I can't, I can't wait to give that a shot. Okay. Doing just a little bit of a smooth here just because it's getting a little too crazy. Just still looking for the main shapes. Okay, let's work on this eyes just a little bit. Need his eyes to be a little bit more squared off. They're a little too round. If I had a chance to play Tears of the Kingdom, uh, yes. Yes, absolutely. I'm freaking loving it. I have not beaten it yet. I've been <laughs> I've been in the middle of two games. I've been playing Street Fighter 6, which is I love it and there are days I'm like, "Oh my god. This game is it's totally new and different." And then I play Tears of the Kingdom, which then satisfies all the OCD, ADHD tendencies I have as a person. So, <laughs> so I love it. Like I just I love what they're doing with it. I think the continuation like, I know there's going to be a third. Um, it's not a spoiler. I'm not going to spoil anything for those who are playing. But I know there's going to be a third uh, iteration. So that's going to go Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, and then their third title. They've already announced that. So I'm excited to see how they kind of wrap that up. Um, so I'm even more excited now. Because I thought Breath of the Wild was a standalone. So when they came out with this game, I was, like, super happy with the fact that it's now, like going in a fun direction. Well, it's already going in a fun direction, but like it's going in a direction that's like, oh, this is actually like, it's like legitimately a trilogy. And I, I love that. How much time do we got? Oh God, running out of time. There's never enough time. There's never enough time. Okay. Okay, we've done a lot. Oh, absolutely. The digital and, and traditional sculpts are totally different approach. I do agree, however, for the sake of time, it is usually more comfy to use the digital one. Anyway, it's a blast. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Yeah, oh no, I'm never dropping digital. <laughs> Let's be real, that's never happening. Uh, but I think a good hobby would be, yeah, having some traditional in my life. That'd be fun. I think that'd be super fun. 
Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the direction that they're going for sure. So that's gonna be good. I'm assuming with this though, you're playing it, Layla. And if so, what are your thoughts? How are you enjoying it so far? I was, I did see that you were doing a Zelda sketch, which looks amazing, by the way. If you didn't know that already, I'm here to remind you. It looked awesome. It's looking awesome. I didn't get to stay for your whole stream, though, so I didn't see your latest update. Okay, I'm getting some plain markouts here. For me, this is the important part. I'm also going to do this thing. I'm going to look at his head upside down. This is something I tend to do because I find that if I look at a head upside down, it gives me, it shows me some of the flaws of the head that I didn't quite see before. Okay, why do I have dynamic turned on? That's not good for anyone. You don't want dynamic on while you have dy dynamesh on. That's not, that's not good. Okay. Oh, yeah. He's looking. Okay. So I will be working on him some more after the stream. Just FYI, I want to give a... I, wanna, I do want to move past some of this early stage. But I do like where this is going. I'm really enjoying Tears of the Kingdom and taking and taking it slow. Yeah, absolutely. Although it doesn't really uh, help <laughs> as I need to get reference for Zelda every now and then. I'm dodging spoilers is getting harder and harder. Absolutely, I know. Yeah. Oh, and trying. Uh, I'll try flipping Zelda next Monday as well. Looks like a fun trick. Nice, nice. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, I like the flipping upside down, and I like the uh, mirror trick, too. Um, ulti, yeah, that's a great one. It's just getting that new perspective, you know? Okay, a little, little fat pad there. I'm going to carve in just a little bit more, kind of bring in a little bit more of his cheekbone emphasis. Okay. Do a light kind of smooth here. Just a little break in his... There's always a little bit of a uh, cartilage break in the nose. I like to try to add that where possible. Okay, getting to the point where I'm actually thinking about moving away from Dynamesh, doing a Z-Remesh, but I need to bring the eyelids in for that. Um, I also need to clean up these lips. These lips are a little too flat, so we need to add a little bit of lip action here. And then of course, too, it's just a chin indicator. Now his chin's getting to the point. Okay, the mouth is just the mouth needs to come forward, and then this needs to. Woo, wrong way. That's the move tool. Don't do that. Okay. Do 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 do. Hey, what's up, Patrick? Burr, 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 burr. Guys, 
Patrick Forty's here. Patrick, what's happening, buddy? Yeah, no, no, no beanie, no beanie. Um, it's summertime now, and the the hair is out. The hair is out. Hopefully, you like the hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah reference and spotlight is actually a good technique too yeah 100 percent. yeah if you guys don't know patrick as well so you got patrick here you got layla here amazing amazing jeepish live artist and if you're in the mood for food come on patrick's the guy he's the guy Okay. Before I get too committed to the shape of his head, let's bring some hair in here before we run out of time. Oh my God, what did I just do there? Okay. Also too, this is two squares right here. We need to kind of round this up a little bit. So we're going to do that. So we're going to crimp this in, kind of trim dynamic this up a little bit. I need to kind of round this area up got to make sure that that's a thing so let's come in I'll pull this back a little bit here's <laughs> absolutely <a> risk. <laughs> cheers fam cheers dude <laughs> All right, let's see here. Let's pull this. Let's pull this back here. Let's come. Nope, nope, wrong way. Let's grab this in. Okay, a little bit of a, a little bit of a mouth section here. Okay. Okay, we'll see about getting in some hair. He looks a little alien right now. This is something with heads that I've realized that happen quite often, is they tend to look a little alien to me until uh, until we get like some other facial features in there. So if you're like if you're like looking at a part where you're like, mm, this looks a little too alien, it's not quite there, that's okay. I'm gonna move forward, get some other elements in, because sometimes those elements are gonna help they're gonna help you kind of like get the rest of it going, right? And then they'll help you see the flaws in the head the rest of the way. It's all about like checking itself against itself. That's the method that I always take. So in this case here, let's get like a base of his hair. So we're just gonna get something, something a little bit closer than that. First things first, let's actually just paint that section in right there. Just get something that will hopefully give me a little bit more of what I want. Like a little bit of a hair cap. This will definitely need to be cleaned up. <laughs> we'll clean them up afterwards. Also, hey, just a heads up, a little, a little shouty shout shout. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be doing workflows between ZBrush and Substance Painter. Uh, it's going to be over on the Ask the Trainer that we run on Maxon. So I'll actually, at the end of this, get you guys a link to that. If that's something you're interested in, Myself and Ellie Wade, we're going to come through and actually showcase some pretty cool processes. And it's more of a follow along. So you guys will be able to like recreate the project that I'm working on as well. So if that's of interest, you're definitely going to want to check that out. Little, little, little shout. All right, let's do an extract here. Okay. <laughs> Look at that funky hair. Let's do that. Let's do that. That's going to be fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and dynamesh this. But now hair is always asymmetrical and his hair is no exception to the rule. So we're gonna go Dynamesh. And I'm just gonna get like a little cap. 
Let's scale this in. I kind of do a little deflate here. I'm looking forward to that as a trainer, Christian. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll get you guys the link to that very, very soon. Like before the stream is out, you get a link to it. So you guys will know. And it goes tomorrow, and I believe that's going to be at 9. I think it's at 9 my time. I'll get you a proper link. Okay. So here I'm going to do, let's do a official hair block out. So this is masked off. We got this, this mess right here. There we go. Select that. I'm going to put this in a folder, call this hair. Now let's see here. I'm thinking we should do, oh, this is the hard part. His hair, his locks are just amazing. You can look at that flow. Like that's super cool. This is super shaggy. We went that direction once a little bit, just as a rough block out. We only have a few minutes, so let's do something. Let's get a, let's get the idea, the shape on it. So I'm just gonna duplicate this for idea number one. I'm gonna go asymmetrical. I'm gonna get kind of the damn standard, and then we're gonna start. Kind of cutting this in just a little bit, give him a little bit of a part. It looks like the part on his head is it's a little it's a little bit more like this. And this is way too low, so we're gonna res this up. Okay. Get something like this going on. Now I'm gonna do a block out method with his hair, but for right now. We're gonna get just a little bit of a sculpture flow to it. However you block out hair, I do kind of a, a mix of both methods where I'll like kind of sculpt the idea of this hair out. And then I'll come through and actually treat hair again like a separate character. I'll come in and I'll start blocking things out and I'll start manipulating it in a way that I think makes the most sense. So he might end up being a little emo in the beginning, but then we'll, we'll change him up just a little bit. So like something like this, I'll take the clay brush. Now, I actually like going in with like a harder clay alpha, but I'll take the intensity and the focal shift down just a little bit. And I'll start kind of showing where the flow is before we do like a, a crazy group. So a lot of this would flow this way. That just kind of clumps it up a little bit. And then that part's going to come straight down. This flows from this section. And then this kind of pulls back a little bit. So then this will give me the idea of what his hair could look like. Right? And then, of course, too, let's just make his face blue so he's not, like, super white. And then his hair is also blue, but it's kind of more leaning towards a darker color. So we're gonna do something like this. So we'll fill this in, come back. We'll fill in this color and this color. I haven't merged these eyes together yet because I'm not quite ready for that. There we go. And now I have something like this. Let's actually clean that up just a teeny bit. I'm gonna turn on symmetry and bring that in. So he's looking a little bit better already. He still needs some eyebrows and stuff like that, but I think this will actually work out fairly well. Yeah, that's, yeah, I think that's gonna look better. Yeah, the curve pinch, Oh, that's a good tip. That is such a good tip. There we go. Okay, so this is where we are at with him. His suit's a little too white. 
So let's actually come in and make it just a little bit darker because that's a little bit more, yeah, something like that. There we go, that's a lot better. Okay, so there's still a lot of cleanup to do, but don't worry, we're gonna get to that. So we did start over just a teeny, teeny bit, but at the end of the day, that's okay. We took a step back so we could take some massive step forward, and I'm really liking the way this is ultimately coming together. We'll do some cleanup on his face. I'll probably do that off stream a little bit, but showcase the project if I get some time. Uh, but we'll definitely go over that just a little bit more. It's already stuff I'm already seeing that I want to correct, which is a lot, but that's okay. It's all about it's all about baby steps. It's all about getting in there. So I'll do a little bit of a smooth right now. Yeah, there we go. Okay, great. We'll get to it. Perfect. So this is our current project at the moment. Just coming through here. Oh, you know what? Let's actually fill that color all the way. I can see that I had a mask down there. There we go. Okay. So, yes. So, we have this guy. He's looking from here to here. So, yeah, not too shabby. Not too shabby. All right, all right, all right. So, let's go ahead and hit save. Bada bing, bada boom. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Sam. Yes. Okay. So real quick here, real fast. We'll do all the fun. We'll do all the fun stuff. You guys already know Zebra Summit. That's happening. I'll share the link again. If I didn't already hitting too many buttons today. Zebra Summit's coming. So you definitely going to want to check that out. And then for tomorrow's stream, if you come on over to maxon.net and then you come over here to, what is it? Events. Yes, here it is. This is the one we're doing. Ellie and myself are doing this tomorrow. It's a fun project. You're going to freaking love it. I guarantee it. So definitely check that out as well. For the summits, definitely register. We're going to have more information on that soon. So you're going to want to keep that in mind. And outside of that, we are done for the day, guys. Thank you so much for everything. It's been amazing. And here's my new face cam. Boom got a new face cam, all that good jazz. So it's been super fun and I'll catch all of you uh, next week. All right. Cheers for now. Bye. 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 Bye.